how I start my work. Sorry. <laughs> that's Going, okay. Yeah. We know recording is in progress. <laughs> so I did a couple of examples of how I begin my work. Uh, as Nancy just said, um, I, I have a watercolor background. So the way I see is from light to dark rather than and typically when you're painting, oil painting, you paint dark to light. But my objective with my landscapes is to keep them as transparent as possible and add, add more and more paint to where you want the viewer to see, where you want to lead the viewer in. So an example, I want to give you guys some examples. That's what, why I have two paintings that are just blocked in here. They're just started. So this is Point Lobos of China Cove. I drew the whole thing in on, on the canvas. The canvas had a couple coats of grounds, ground on it. And then I just wanted to block it in and leaving this all very transparent here, except for maybe a couple of areas and, and letting it dry. And then I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do some glazes. And the glazes help give it a three-dimensional look, especially with, with the rock and your distance. So that's what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna do some glazing. I'm, I'm staying away from detail, details at the end. And uh, I call this my step two phase where I've already blocked it in. And the next thing I'm gonna do is get my lights and darks in. So I've already got a lot of darks in, but I'm gonna continue with that. On this uh, big sur scene, um, I decided what, what I wanted to show you also was some how to do detail when it comes to grasses and flowers and, and things that can get really, um, really confusing sometimes and <laughs> where to stop and, and how to do it. So I went ahead and, and just went pretty far with this. And my goal today will be to add some detail to the flowers here, the mustard and the Queen Anne's lace, get the light back in it. And um, uh, obviously, I want you to see what can what the canvas looks like with no paint on it. So I thought I'd lay in the water. Um, the other thing I wanted to do was um, tell you guys, um, explain to you guys some things about how I use my palette, and um, mention this book, which is terrific gives you all the secrets of composition by Edgar Payne, composition of outdoor painting, but it's also indoor. Um, in his book, he tells you all kinds of things. So this is a must have in your studio. I wanted in this Big Sur painting to lead your eye in with this path and then rest right in here. So I'm gonna keep my color really pure where the light is hitting this mustard here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna highlight some of the grass. Um, and I, wanna, I want to have the sky and the water be fairly smooth since this is so busy. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I will carry on. The other thing I wanted to talk about is brushes, palette and paint. So some of the things I um, would highly recommend are rosemary brushes. If you haven't already tried her brushes, you can get them in the UK, order from rosemaryandcompany.com, but Wind River Arts in Texas sells them and you get them in a few days, but they're just the greatest brushes. And this dagger, this um, ivory dagger, you can do all sorts of things, detail, you can get a line, you can get a wash, it's just terrific. I mean, also a really good brush for detail like uh, stems and little tiny things. 
uh, and they last a long time and they carry some paint is a not very expensive Dick Blick um, script brush. And this is a number four, number twos are good. But those are really important. The other thing I wanted to say is for washes, these angle brushes are great. Uh, it's Creative Mark, Jerry sells these. They're soft, so you can move paint around without disturbing your brush strokes, unless you want to. So it's a really nice brush. So that's that. So what I'm gonna start with here is, I'm really happy with the color I have in this cove in China Cove and I want your eye to rest there, but all this I really want dull and it isn't right now. So I'm gonna dull it out a little bit. And uh, one of the things I really have gotten a lot out of is using a, a very limited palette. And um, I think, and the reason I say that is kind of one of the biggest mistakes that I don't wanna make is having the same intensity of color and the same detail everywhere. You want your eye to rest somewhere. You don't wanna, you, you may love detail, you may love to do it, you may be really good at doing it, but it's not particularly a successful painting in my opinion. So what I try to do is, is create a three-dimensional feeling in, in a couple of areas and then let the eye rest as it goes back, which may mean some smooth areas. It may mean um, some duller color. And it definitely isn't using color right out of the tube uh, until the very end. So um, I moved my palette. I usually have this big palette over here but I moved it right here. So hopefully you can see. And my limited palette, I kind of do the Zorn palette, but with modifications. If you know Anders Zorn's work, um, he does really beautiful uh, portrait work. And he used cadmium red light, ivory black, white, and yellow ochre. I've modified that to, um, I don't use cadmium red, I, but I love the sari colors. Permanent bright red is like magic. This is a beautiful color. So I use white, permanent bright red, yellow ochre and Payne's gray instead of ivory black. Ivory black I'd use if I was doing portraits. So just when I block in, um, when I'm first doing a, a block in, I'm, I'm keeping it really, really simple in color. And then I kind of use that as my grays. And then I bring in colors from my palette. Um, and if you guys want to know any of these, find I won't bore you if you, if you don't want to know. So maybe what I'll do is I think I'll start with, um, I wanted to kind of bring in more color. Uh, oh, the other thing, sorry, one more thing, magic. A must have gambling gel. So the only the only time I use turpentine or, or mineral spirits is just to clean my brushes. Gel, like I said, it I want to keep my uh, paint transparent. So the gel helps me um, give get this kind of modeled look without too much paint. So I love gel. So might want to try it. <laughs> so what I want to do is I want to brighten up uh, some of my uh, color here on in the foreground of this big sur painting. It, it's a little flat. It needs some brighter color. And it also, I want to define some of these um, lines for, uh, for the foliage. So I'm just gonna kind of give it some little lemon yellow, phthalo yellow green, and then I always dull it with a red, with the greens. Need to kind of knock those back. 
So this is a great brush. It's also a rosemary brush. You can do a detail with it. And it's an ivory angular. So I don't know if you guys can see it, but I've got uh, pencil lines here from, from um, drawing it in. And I'm just following my lines. I'm really careful not to lose my lines if I can help it. Right now, the painting is too cool. So I'm gonna warm it up with some reds and yellows. Also, if I start really uh, transparent, like I said, um, there's room for uh, correction. So I start really, really, really slowly. When it's a representational landscape, It's, it doesn't boggle my brain to um, start slowly. So I'm very, very careful. So I um, can see where I'm going. I also have a mirror behind me. And that mirror um, does wonders in reversing. Reversing uh, what I see and I catch my, uh, what I need to correct. And one of the things I'm doing here is I'm creating space. So obviously the light and bright comes forward and then behind the sticky things is more green. So that's gonna cheer up the painting a little bit. Shelly, we have a question from Holly. Um, what's the name of the book again by Edgar Payne? That is called um, Composition of Outdoor Painting. Composition of outdoor painting. Okay, thank you. And that will tell you almost everything you need to know about composition and principles of painting. So you don't have to get it from anybody else. He's like one of my favorite artists. So as you can see, detail takes a while, um, but I try to refrain from doing anything like this until the very, very end, but I wanted you to see how I might do it in case somebody wants to know um, how to do the, um, what brushes to use, et cetera, or how I do it <laughs> anyway. Shelly, are you using a reference photo? I am, I usually compile them. And um, so I put together some photos that I like and. But you don't have the photo right near you? No, right now I just know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> know what I wanna do anyway. Um, I mean, it may seem tedious, but keeping in mind that every flower has a light side, a dark side, a warm side, a cool side. And for my cool, what I usually use is a mixture that is a um, purple. And how I mix that, it's this right here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but this is it. It's what I've used in here. And then it turns to a beautiful mauve but it's just a neutral, it's just a neutral. And it also knocks back your bright colors and it's a, it's a natural color too. So um, it works with rocks and, and so forth, but there's a lot of purple in nature, I find, not just brown. 
a lot of mauves and reds and so that's what this needs to me is is more red and mauve sticky color <laughs> So these are really handy, these angle brushes for um, just hitting your, your edges like that. And uh, so that's how I do that. So, but what I wanna do is kind of get in, get some, get some prettier green in here. And a really pretty green that I like is um, Vasari Cedar. And I use Vasari Cedar as, as a gray uh, with, with a brighter color. And that's what I'm doing right now when I mix it. And if you want it warmer, all you have to do is add burnt sienna or red to it and voila, you got it. If you want it, yellows are good too with your greens. Nothing happens real fast with representational art. <laughs> so, uh, but that is getting a little more, it looks a little prettier with the um, lighter green. The other thing I don't know until I put the water in is how blue the sky will be. And so I just leave, I just usually leave my skies to the very end. I just block them in like they are right now. And um, because the sky obviously is blue and the water's blue, I have to wait and see, get the right balance. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the water in right now, which is a mixture of red and green and blue. And with this area with the seaweed, it can get that purple in it a little bit and sort of a brown color. But again, I'm keeping, I wanna, my goal is to keep the paint thin and um, I'll put the sky color in at the end. But here I do work dark to light because I'll do the lighter over it, so. But our water can vary, as you know, from sort of a purpley color to a green. And um, it depends on what you want to do. Then as it gets further back, I just add a little bit of white. It's greener as it gets closer to the uh, shore.
because I put ground on my canvas, I can use a soft brush and it picks up so I can leave it really blended like that. If it had a lot of bumps on the canvas, it would kind of hitch. So I kind of like that, the ground. Um, I'm going to leave that smooth because again, there's so much going on here. I kind of want your eye to just rest a little bit in the water. So um, and I'll put on, put in the white around the rocks, not everywhere, but just here and there, the foam. If you want to add some waves, you can. But that's basically where I'm going to go with that. Um, the deeper areas will have more of the ultramarine blue feeling, and then it'll vary. And um, so here, in the foreground, is a little kind of flat but I think that's just the way it dried. But um, there we go. So that's what that needs right there is, is just a little more where the light's hitting it and the grass is coming over. This is a bush coming over here. It's a bush coming over here. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to step it back. So where, where I have an edge of light, I'm gonna to try to have dark and so forth. And getting duller as I go back. So that will be duller, that will be duller. And, um, and you just kind of play with it until you're happy. This is a great brush where you can just kind of hit it, you know, and get a random feel for it. Um, I love that where you can just, and I'm not afraid to get my uh, values in. So if you need a value finder, it's really handy because that's another big mistake that uh, I, I'd rather avoid is not getting your darks dark enough and your lights light enough. So that, but it takes an oil paint, you have to build it. Um, the ground on the canvas enables it not to soak in as much. So you don't lose your color when the linseed oil dries, but you still have to go over it. I, I'd say maybe a few times in the foreground where you have your detail the strongest. So um, that's why what I will do here with these. Okay, so the way I put in rocks, I don't use a lot of paint for rocks. I just get my glaze and some pure color like uh, yellow ochre. Um, maybe with a little bit of Payne's gray. I'm just gonna, that's kind of gonna be a greeny look. So I put a little red in it. That's a kind of a rich brown and I just glaze them where I've already drawn it on. So, and that way I can still see my lines after it's dry, I come back and hit it with more opaque color like I've started to do here. 
with that. Some people use burn umber a lot, and that's another good one. Um, for rocks, I don't actually know if I put it out, but fix it. And I don't want to get too dark back there. I'll just keep it on the light side um, with these rocks and the cliffs where the water hits it. It's always a rich brown. Okay. It's really neat that you, you know, I can go with the same brush and I'm still using the same brush, which is pretty great because you don't have to lose your concentration um, with these, has a great point. So I want my corners to go away down in here. So those are gonna be duller and darker. I want, again, I want my light and eye to be in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, give this a little bit of brightness in here. And that's gonna be pure lemon, cadmium lemon yellow. Um, And just see how that sits with a lot of glaze on it. Got a lot of glaze on, on there, but it may be too strong, but I can rub it in. But right where the light's hitting, I'm gonna want it to shine. And again, the dull purple to in there and the grasses is a good choice.
Oh, sorry. Um, so how does that look? Yeah, see that's getting brighter. When I blocked in the ocean, that's a little too green, but I blocked in the ocean. Now you're starting to get some vibrancy. And um, I'm gonna get the ocean in with a little bit. I'm gonna add some panes, grade, grade it out and just kind of knock it back. Right in here. And it'll start to set up, so it'll pick up some color, which I don't want, but that's okay. Oh, that's probably just enough. Yeah, that's good. And then where the where the current runs in, it'll be have some movement to it. There we go. And ocean has our ocean has some of the yellow dull yellow to it, like you see in here. And um, like I said, some uh, seaweed, which is the red, if you want to add it. And then up front, I usually do sort of, because I like your eye to kind of stay up in here. And I just do some sort of turquoise, cobalt teal is great color. Um, cobalt teal and quinacridone, Magenta together are really pretty. Again, I really limit my palette until I get to this place because it can get too much color for me, for my eye. I have to be able to figure it out while I'm painting it and like it and know where I'm going with it. So, um, I kind of keep things fairly uh, modified color-wise. Okay. I can use any one of these brushes. I don't know why I'm still using this one, but it's fine. Okay, so and I will when I'm in this stage, I will go everywhere. I don't just start one place and work on it and go to another. I'll go to a, num a number of different areas. Um, And then I'll let it dry and I, I won't touch it for a day and then come back and stare at it and see what I think and then uh, take it real slow. Let me see. Okay, I wanna bring this in, this deep water here. A little bit more, there we go. And then break. I'm turning around, I'm looking in a mirror. Is for my eye, it's uh, easier for me to see what I need to do rather than being so up close like I am. So. And then at the end, I can put uh, sky color in there once it's dry. Okay, so. Okay, that's starting to look like what I want uh, in here. So I might just be ready to leave it. You notice it's really transparent. I'm not using a lot of paint. 
So I'm going to have my heavy paint in here, a little bit on where the light is on the rocks, and that's it. For my style, there's not one way to do it, but it's just for me. Okay, anybody have any questions so far? Awfully quiet out there. <laughs> uh, Shelly, it's about quarter to five. So um, you can demo um, till five or 5.30, whatever you feel like. What everybody wants. You guys have questions or? Um, well, I was wondering what, so uh, the painting to your right, what is, yeah. uh, what are you gonna, gonna Yeah, do? let me start that. Okay, very good. Let me do that. Um, I'm gonna show you how to, I'm gonna warm it up. It's too cool. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, to my right, what I'm gonna do, I wanna dull some of these areas and I wanna warm it up because that'll make this cove pop. So I'm going to take some um, yellow ochre, go to color, a little bit of white, blaze. And I'm going to, let's see, I think it needs to go a little bit duller. There, there we go. And I'm going to give it the rock some roundness. So this rock, oh, that's strong. I'm just going to spread that. That's the other thing. It's really handy. You guys as painters know what paint does when you spread it. So it's really handy to know um, what it's going to do when it's thin. Shelly, we have a few questions about glazing. Uh -huh. uh, so the um, Jim asked, he hasn't just started painting with oils yet. He, he wants to know uh, what the technique is exactly. And then Holly asked, uh, why did you decide to glaze the left painting where you did? Why so, did I do what? Why did you decide to glaze? the left oh. painting where you did. Oh, okay. Uh, I just hit this area with color because uh, it's pure color right out of the tube and with, mixed with gel, it'll still be transparent. So that's why I glazed. Is that what you mean? I glazed right there? Yeah. And Okay. Yes, I and think that. Mm -hmm. I see. And then the other question was what again on this one? What is the glazing technique? Okay, right. glaze. Okay, glazing technique. I don't know if you guys can see my palette, but I've got this glaze. It's really called glaze. It's gel. Free, it's gel, I guess. That's what you call it? Uh, Solvent-free gel. You get a couple of them. There's two different kinds of gambling. This is solvent-free. There's another one that isn't as thick that you might like. But I mix that with color. And the reason I do that is that for my work, I want to keep things as transparent as possible. And because the only place I want to add paint is where I want the viewer to look. And the rest needs to be more painterly. So when you do a glaze, it's like a watercolor effect for oil paint. Yeah, and I, I was uh, gonna say, I think uh, your glazing is something like a watercolor uh, idea. And right. that's your paintings are very interesting in that uh, because you combine 
uh, the, the the thicker oil with the watercolor kinds of techniques, which is neat. That's right. That's right. That's right. And you see a lot of artists have been watercolor painters and they still are. I mean, when you go, when I go in the field, that's what I use is, is squash or watercolor. But um, uh, for a successful painting for me, I need to have it very thin paint in a, in, in a lot of places. I don't want thick paint. And now a lot of people disagree with that. They can, they can manage it, right? But the point is that you have to paint the way you see, right? So if you're looking at a tree, there's something that goes on in your mind that says, I use this color, that color, and I get there what I need to use to, to paint that tree. Even after you've drawn it, you already know the structure, you already know the composition of the tree, but something in your particular eye has a vision of your view of that tree. It's only your view. So for me, when I look at a tree, I don't see heavy paint. I see really thin paint. And then where the light is, I can hit it with paint. So it's how you see it. And it's really important to stick to what you see, <laughs> I think, and not do anything else because it gets confusing. <laughs> so anyway, where was I? So what I was gonna do was glaze this um, rock. And the reason I'm doing that to answer the glaze person's question is that it'll just, the paint will do it for you. That's where the artistic part comes in, where the paint will just give you texture. It, once it dries, it'll do things you had no idea it was gonna do. <clears throat> so that's the fun part is you, you can just um, see what it's gonna do and, uh, Leave it, let it dry. Um, sometimes you don't like it, but most of the time, if you leave it, if you leave it and walk away, it's going to be really pretty. I find. I've got pencil lines here, so I can see what I, where I need to go. And um, I wanted to do kind of a outline where the rock is up against this, this uh, cove. So, And sometimes if you take uh, lessons or a workshop, they, they won't even call a brush stroke a brush stroke. They'll call it a mark or a note or things. And that's, I think, to, to get your brain to just not think in terms of a rock or a water or a blade of grass. It's just, it's just color. And um, that way it turns off your turns off your brain to think I'm having to do this like a, a you know, a photograph. So, um, and that's where the art comes in is if you just let the paint do things, even if you're drawing representationally like I do, um, It, it gets artistic because it just takes on a life of its own. So, okay, so uh, what did I wanna to do to this? What I wanted to do is dull the pine right here. So here, here we go with glazes again. Um, because again, I want your corners 
to be, I want my corners to really fade out and, um, and your eye go into the painting. So pretty much that's what I do. These are pine trees here, and there's a light side and a dark side. It's my light side. I'm going to I don't want to get in front of the camera so you guys can see, but um, basically just the edges of these pine uh, pines will show this, just the tips right here like that, just here and there. There. That's what, that's where, the way that's going to go. And Okay, so in this phase here, my next step is going to make, like I said earlier, I want my darks to be darker and my lights to be lighter. So let me get a rag. I've got paint all over me. You still see me? Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is darken my rock. This rock comes all the way down. It actually goes all the way around. And I like to deconstruct my lines. Um, once I draw the whole thing out, then I use paint to deconstruct it. You'll see that I'm kind of going over my lines a little bit just to kind of There we go. Oh. Lights hitting right here. There, there, water's going in. This is foam, that's beach, this is foam right here. And then, as you know, there's a couple holes in the rocks, which those will stand out with the with the dark. I'm gonna go dark light, dark light. This this cliff I'm happy with. This is gonna come forward. Um,
that may look like I'm doing detail, but I'm kind of trying to stay away from that a little bit on this one. And I'm trying to, the net, my next step is to get everything in the right place more than anything. So, um, basically, uh, Basically, it's getting dimension and warmth back in it. And you see these places that have the light, the white canvas showing through, they become just another interesting variation when you just go over it. So you may not need to go back. These trees are gonna be all basically uh, dark on the left side, the light coming that way. There's a tree coming in over here. It's a cliff, there's a tree there. These trees should come forward. Usually I mix all my paint in advance. I just didn't have room on this palette. I didn't want to be reaching over here so you guys could see. There you go. See, I don't know if you guys can see through the phone, but that really helps highlight uh, the, the light side of the tree. And what's doing that is the color and with some glaze in it. And again, the glaze will help it not go away overnight, the color go away. So. Okay, so that's starting to look like a rock. Um, get some more red in it. Eeks. Jim said to say thank you very much, Shelly. He had to run to another meeting. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, he's really enjoying it. <laughs> I know I'm learning a lot about uh, mixing uh, oils and kind of making a watercolor effect, which is so interesting. Well, in order to get with my background, um, that my background was uh, more of a, that's how I see too, more of a representation, representational painter. So I had to figure out, like I said, what, work for, what works for me in the way I see it? How do I get there? So is how does the paint work? When you spread it, what is it gonna do? What's the effect when you stand back and look at it in reverse in the mirror? 
So right now I'm seeing in the mirror, I'm seeing where I'm gonna go is this dark goes away and I want the light to pop, which I think it's gonna do. And um, I like this tree right here. I like the dark side and the light side. Uh, again, with the warm greens. And um, I'm liking the foreground being duller, which is pretty much this mauvey purple and reds, dull your greens. Your purples will dull anything. They're the, it's a great color for dulling. <laughs> purple, I mix my own, but a really great purple. If you want a bright purple, try conacridone, magenta, and cobalt teal. Now that's a purple. <laughs> really pretty. Sometimes you need a bright purple. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, I think this is warmer now. This rock is going to come forward. Um, and then I'll keep my grays and cooler colors back in here. This branch, maybe I'll do that right now. Whoever's listening that wants to see a glaze, here's a glaze. I'm going to do um, that branch because light's hitting that branch and that pine tree. So let's see if we can make it work. So it comes this way and then it goes down that way. This goes over and up. So now once I get it in, I can make it opaque. I'm always thinking transparent, opaque, transparent, opaque, light, dark, dull, bright. Is probably why I can't talk very well and paint at the same time. <laughs> okay, so that should give you the feeling of that branch coming in with some light on it. And then I'll figure out where I want the light to hit the, the different um, fronds of, of uh, pine. That's the fun part. You get to do it. And the light doesn't change on you while you're standing there. <laughs> and then these are gonna be some, I painted the Lone Cypress a number of times because I used to show at uh, Pebble Beach Gallery for a number of years. And the best way to do, um, rocks for me is to just get get my creases in and then come over them with your opaque color and and paint it kind of out you know so that you're deconstructing your rock um, so it's not a perfect graphic line because sometimes the brushes can be really good but these will be um these are branches right here so these kind of come out this. I mean, that's for the end, but just so you guys can see it. Um, so this has a little bit more, I think it needs a little more of the red in it. So, and green in here. Anybody have any other questions? Um, Shelly, we have a question from Debbie. How, uh -huh. how did you prep your canvas? Uh, good question. Uh, two coats of ground, oil ground. Two coats. And I don't prefer linen, believe it or not. Um, it's too slippery for me. I, I use, I have a, a number of different things I use, but I'm really kind of sticking with a certain cotton matte canvas that I put um, 
oil ground on. I just finished a huge commission for a company. I signed an NDA, so I can't say who, but it was six feet long. And um, it took a number of months. And the fact that it has the oil ground, you can build your transparent layers and it's really forgiving. Um, if you if you go over an area, like I don't like to go over an area more than four or five times. If I went over an area and thought, oh, no, I don't like that, it, it still looked fresh and clean and the paint didn't get muddy. So I really like the oil ground use of that on there. Um, it's a pain, a little bit of a pain to do it. You have to wait for it to dry and all that, but I highly recommend it. So let's see. So I'm deconstructing some of my edges uh, a little bit with the rock. Now I'll have to refer to the photo for all that. Um, but in this stage, this is like my second stage after the block in, I start to to work the lights in the dark. So that's what I'm concentrating on. So on. That's what I'm gonna do on the edges underneath in there, in there and in there. I don't wanna stand in front of the camera, but I'll just clean up my sky and bring in the light. Um, I, like I said, I like these trees. These, these are working for me. That's gonna come forward and that's gonna stay back. Also, fingernails look, work really great for, for lines. You know, I don't know if you ever tried that, but when the paint's wet, you can just scratch in a branch or, you know, don't be afraid to do that. I do it all the time. See what we have here. Yeah, so I'm looking at it in reverse and I really like that. I think it could use a little more oomph of purple, which is my mixed purple right in here. This is probably gonna be really much more purple in there, I guess reflecting. And that. And yeah, those the cliffs have the red in them. So
Okay. So is it probably, I'm getting to a good place where I'd stop and uh, let it dry. And not get it too, too muddy. I like the clean, clean colors. Smooth out my corners. This is a white rock right there. So I'll probably kind of give that a little bit of a dimension to it. So it's not so flat. Um, Shelly, uh, we have a question from Marley. How do you sign when you're finished? How do I sign it? You mean it? You mean actually how? What brush or what do you mean? Um, not quite. Do they, sure. they don't say. I use a signature brush. If that's what you mean, is how do you sign it? I, for me, I print. A lot of people they scratch their name in and web paint or, uh, but I I I like a signature brush, which is. Um, why it's called that um if that's if that if i'm answering your question i believe that what was that um i think that probably answered the question just okay. let it know if it didn't and it is about quarter after five so most people usually leave probably about 5 30 because they have you know dinner or you know other right things. so so um, do they have any other questions for me um anybody else have questions um i was just curious about your blocking process that's step one i guess because <laughs> um the two paintings that you had initially that was after your step one. That was after you did a block in. Right. I draw. Step one is drawing. Basically, I draw it all out. Mm -hmm. I'm happy with what I want to do. The next one is total block in with just a 50% lighter version of what it's going to be in the end. Okay. And, and then I let it dry. Mm -hmm. And the paint does some marvelous things. And you don't, you don't have to fuss with it. Just look at it. And that's when you can change. Maybe something's too small, too big, or you have to move it or whatever. That's the time to do it. And the paint's thin. You can just scrub it out. Then uh, that's step two. And that's the block in. And then step three, you start. I start adding what I'm doing. Light starks, light starks. I'm not doing a lot of detail, although... Although when you use these brushes, you can still get the effect in that's detailed. But what I'm thinking in my head is light, warm, cool, light, dark. That's, that's really what I'm doing. So when I look at this, I stand back and I look at that. I'm going to look through that pine tree. This is going to be duller. Actually, it needs, needs to be duller and see this, this hole, this hole in the rock, the beach and this edge. That's what, that's my goal. So I'm not gonna do a whole lot to the colors here or here. I'm gonna clean up all this white canvas with sky and I'm gonna add edges to this pine, but the shape of it is fine. It's random enough. That's the other thing. You don't want pattern. You, nature doesn't have a pattern. So 
and and our eye, unless you're extremely talented, and I can name a couple of artists that are, that their eye doesn't make uh, a pattern. They see random shapes. So if you don't see random shapes, do whatever you need to do to not make a pattern. And that's paint with your left arm, turn it upside down. I don't care, whatever it is. But you don't want to get uh, sometimes it's fun to sort of do detail like this, but then you stand back and you go, oh my God, what did I do? Um, that's why moving a brush around and um, using random brushes that you can move, you know, stay loose with your, with your wrist. You know, with, with the light side of this, um, for some reason, nothing's looking very light because it's the time of day. But with the light side of these trees, you know, just move my hand around and just hit it and leave the paint right there. So, Sorry, I can't, I can't really see with it at that angle, but I'm gonna have my dark edge where the cliff drops. Um, now I'm, I'm probably gonna leave a lot of that. Once it dries, I'll dry brush it in. You guys probably know a dry brush where you're really using just a dry brush and you're just mm, like this right here that's going to be reflecting this beautiful green water. So it's got a little bit of yellow ochre and Payne's gray on top of that um, rock color. Mixed with some phthalo yellow green, which is in that water. And you're going to get, you're going to get some of that, which is really fun. You just, that's a dry brush. You just kind of actually that's not reflecting that much. It's over here. But that's um, gonna be that's what's really fun with with uh, rocks is you have a warm side, a cool side. You don't want, want them to look too solid. <laughs> so you use just kind of a dry brush and brush it in where you see the cool green in there. Yeah, that's pretty. And then this right here on this is gonna be reflecting the warmer. So that's the yellow ochre side of things right here. Right here, that's the edge of that rock. There. 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 A lot of artists kind of put pink in rocks and that's there, I think. I think it can be pretty. I'm not a big pink rocker. <laughs> purple, I'll do purple, but, but you see a lot of artists really use a kind of a pinky, lizard and crimson-y kind of effect. Same with the beach, the beach can have a lot of pink in it. But see how that color, that, so that color right there is, you know, that's a white rock, but that's the shadow side of the rock. That is a pure thin, no white, I don't think, very little white paint with my glaze, with my gel glaze. 
And I won't need to do a whole lot more to that. And I'll continue to um, just build, like I said, this this will get duller, that'll get duller. I'll put more paint in here. I like where that's going. That's gonna be brighter, shimmery, and that's got the seaweed. On this one, I'm gonna let this dry. And the thing that occurs to me first is to get these to come forward, these little Queen Anne's lace or whatever you call them and the um, mustard. And I'll let all that dry. I'll put a little bit more of the lighter mauve green back in here and back in here. This will be the stronger. These will fade back. And then I'll see where I am. And I may have to add, add or take away color in the sky. So. I'll just see where I am. And this is a, coming across a little too orange for me, but that's okay. I'm about to have it too bright than too dull in the foreground. Anybody else have a question? I appreciate your coming on and and listening. I hope it makes your painting experience a easier one. Uh, we you give you're you're taking the time, Shelley, very much. Thank you. Well, it can painting can be frustrating. I hope it made it more fun. Yeah. But, very nice. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's incredible. Incredible. Did we make some progress today on this? I can't <laughs> tell. <laughs> yes, I think so. I think you really enhanced the the foreground of the, the leftmost painting and the put in the water was beautiful and and uh, watching the rocks come to life on the right, that's really, really neat, so. Yeah, I like that big rock right here. That's gonna be so fun to get the red algae or whatever that is on it. And, uh, and then you know where to put the crevices and uh, that's a beautiful scene. I love Point Lobos. That is gorgeous. I mean, you've got some gorgeous scenes to begin with here. And the composition is like really, really interesting. And you, it's just incredible. Colors are great. Yeah, many people are saying thank you very much, Shelley. They're signing off. Well, so glad to meet everybody. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. And thank you, Nancy. You're welcome. I just have one more question. How sure. long does it normally take you to do, say, uh, a painting the, the size that you're doing there? This is uh, 14 by 18. And um, uh, from start to finish, I work on a few things at a time so it can dry. And uh, so including that, it probably a couple of weeks. OK, wow. So I just finished this big six foot painting that was a landscape and that was from start to finish, probably three months. Wow. Six foot. <laughs> yeah. Six mm -hmm. foot. It was something, but uh, I wish I could show it to you guys, but anyway, yeah, it was, um, I think I, for me, for my, um, personality and the way I see it, I'd rather stop too soon and put it aside and put a timer on and just limit my painting time, let it dry and look at it fresh the next day. Interesting. So, yeah, sometimes you can look at it and see different things and uh, mm -hmm. um, you don't wanna undo, you don't wanna make it too muddy. 
you don't want to put too much paint on it. I don't anyway. Mm. But uh, but I sure appreciate your. Yes, thank you so on. much. Yeah, many people have said thank you. The paintings are beautiful. Thank you so much. Well, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. And I'm going to stop the recording here. So Okay. Okay, real good. That's okay with everyone. Okay.